Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel. Before I forget, I'm wearing my lengthened Rhapsody blouse dress that I made out of this super nice chiffon. So I remember to say, and about Love Notions, I have uh, participated in a pattern test for them just recently. Um, I had a pattern tested for them since the duet trousers, I believe, um, last year. Um, <clears throat> we're on sort of different hemispheres, so sometimes they're testing really cozy, neat things, and I'm like dying in, <laughs> in the heat. So, yeah, that's why I haven't been testing the, the recent neat patterns that they've um, come out with. But this dress, let me tell you. <laughs> so, this dress is called the Lyric Dress. It comes with many, many, many options, as all the Love Notions patterns do, so you can mix and match features of all the things available to make it your own. So basically, um, the common features are that it's a button down, all the way down with a V neckline, and the bodice is fitted with um, bust starts and waist starts front and back. Um, there are cup sizes available, A through D, and then you can choose whether you want to do a peplum and make it like a top, uh, a flared skirt or a gathered skirt and there's optional slash pockets for the flared skirt and patch pockets for the gathered skirt. And about the sleeves, yeah, you can choose whatever sleeve you like because there's six options there for sleeves. Uh, sleeveless, which is always my preferred, and then there's like short, long, flared, bishop, like whatever. You, you can find your perfect sleeve there or your preferred type of sleeve there in this pattern. This dress is designed to be made in woven fabric. So yeah, totally up my alley. I always gravitate towards woven fabrics. Um, I just like how the fit is more accurate and more real, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, give me a really nice v-neck with cup sizes, a fitted bodice in a woven, and I am all over that. So yeah, light to medium weight wovens that will drape nicely. Um, I chose uh, to make my versions in uh, crepe. Zero stretch, nice drape, thick enough that they are chi, and that, that's a choice I made. But you can use rayon, linen, poplin, chambray, uh, maybe a really thin denim. It's, crepe is not listed, but I tend to to choose it because I like it and it is a light to medium weight woven with zero stretch so it does work as well. In regards to sizing, this pattern comes from sizes 0 to 24 US sizing, a bust of 32 inches to 49 and a half inches and a waist of 26 inches to 41 and a half inches. Now I, I've put a little slide there so you can see what the dress is designed to fit like. Um, you can see the ease at the bust is from one to three inches at the waist the same and at the hip six to seven inches of ease. So if you're looking at a bust and waist measurement on one size and you think you need to blend to the next for the hips, you don't really need to. You can just make a straight size if you're one size off on the hips, maybe even two, maybe one or two, you, you decide. but. <laughs> You don't really need to blend to the next size at the hips because of the ease uh, incorporated in the design. So the dress is meant to be nice and fitted to you, to your body. Not skin tight, but to follow your shape and to be fitted as such. Um, for my specific size, the ease around the bust is one and a half inches and around the waist is one inch. So the ease is not the same throughout the sizing. You know, there is a broad size range from zero to 24. And so each different size needs sort of a different amount of ease, you know, that's how it works. <laughs> um, so to choose your size, you need to uh, do it based on your high bust measurement. And then uh, compare what the difference is between your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement to determine your cup size. Uh, in my case, I always choose a C cup because my measurement is three inches smaller here than it is there. Therefore, I am a C cup for sewing and for bras, <laughs> but not everyone is like that. Um, but you'll find all the instructions that you need to be able to choose your bust size properly and have a dress that's going to really fit you, you know. Now, the construction of this dress is uh, different to what I've done before, especially around the neckline. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that to get the results that I got. Um, it's really clean, the instructions how to do it as well, but for you visual people, sometimes it's good to see how it's done like 
with someone doing it. I have a process video showing you a teeny bit of construction, the most important step you can't skip, uh, how I did the neckline, the hem and the buttonholes. So that's coming next. Now, before assembling the whole blouse, the first step that is super important, especially with these V necklines, is to stay stitch. So I stay stitched everything, the back neckline and both fronts, and then I started constructing my piece, the shoulders, the darts, whatever, all that stuff. And now I'm at a stage where I can attach the bias binding to the neckline. So you can see the press marks there from passing my bias strips through the 18 millimeter um, bias tape maker. And so basically that line there that's been pressed, I'm going to line it up with the raw edges and I'm going to close up. You can see the stay stitch is smaller than the quarter inch seam allowance I'm going to use to put on the bias tape. So I'm flipping that little band that has been interfaced right sides together. I decided to bias bind those edges there for the bands just to make it look pretty. I'm putting a pin there to hold it together and now using that press line there I've lined it up raw edges to the edge there of the bodice uh, center front where the band has already been folded and I'm just matching. Now bias tape stretches and if you stretch it slightly while you're pinning it onto your, the neckline it's going to help um, that neckline stay firm and avoid a little bit of gaping. So I do stretch it out slightly when I'm pinning it in um, just to take good use of that bias. So um, yeah, have a lot of fun pinning um, all the way around and then I go and stitch. Uh, my guide is that press mark that I've got there, very visible from my bias tape maker. I don't know what I would do without that little gadget. Um, so yeah, you just go from one extreme to the other, whiz pass through these like technology allows you to do. And then you're sort of reaching the other extreme of that front there. You can see the bias tape doesn't really need to reach the whole end because that's going to be tucked under that band for the buttons. So um, yeah, I'm just removing pins as I go as I usually just drop them on the table there. And I finish that end there and I backstitch. Um, there you can see how it looks and when I flip it around um, it's going to be quite nice and clean inside. I'm going to flip it there so you can see um, this is how it's going to be finished inside but we need to top stitch. I always clip so I always clip the neckline no matter what even if it's not in instructions I'll go ahead and do that because it's just going to make everything lie nice. I'm going to under stitch this bias tape so I'm flipping the seam allowance up you know towards the bias tape and I'm going to go all the way around this neckline and under stitch this bias tape this will just help it lie inside and uh, just gives a nicer finish so I'm going through that all the way around to the other side you don't need to go all the way to the end because uh, part of it is going to be flipped inside now that I've finished that under stitch, I can flip it around and start pinning this, uh, getting it ready then to hand baste all the way around and then sew it onto the garment. That's how it's going to look, nice and clean. And around the back neckline where it's curved, I've actually clipped that bias binding as you can see there and then I'm turning it under. And all this is just going to help it go around the curves of that back neckline better and to lie flatter when you're sewing it. Bias tape is not that easy, um, it, if you want it to look really good, I think you need dedication. Um, here I'm just pressing everything really, uh, I have already hand basted it, that happened magically off camera and I'm just getting ready to sew. I'm going to do a continuous sew all around the neckline, the, the bands and the hem, it will be one continuous stitch at the bottom there, I've folded the band, I've already pressed that. So I'm turning it right sides together and on that press mark of my seam allowance for the hem, it's just going to be one centimeter. I've sewn that um, and then I'm going to flip that and it's going to give me a really clean finish at the bottom there of the band and it's going to have the hem inside. I'm going to pin this band, everything, and the hem all the way around and I'm going to start sewing on the back neckline towards sort of my neck and that's where I'm going to go all the way there. When I reach this pivot area I go really slowly 
over that bias tape, uh, hand wheeling, super precise corner there. So I take my time and then I pivot and then I sew all the way down this band. Here I'm using a two and a half centimeter or inch allowance there. And when I get to the bottom, I also pivot carefully and start my hem that I'm just using three eighths of an inch. Uh, because this peplum has a curve, the smaller the hem, the better. Here I'm reaching the other side of the band, the other pivot area there on the neckline. And here I'm almost done. I'm just pivoting and I'm going to finish this neckline at the place where I started. Now I don't backstitch, I just leave loose threads and do a knot by hand because it just makes it look nicer. I usually do that when any stitching is visible. So um, buttons, I use a smaller button to put into my buttonhole foot as reference so that my buttonhole is slightly smaller it makes my button light a bit more snug. I've counted all the buttons I want. I usually put one more than what's recommended and I want a button to sit right in the middle of the seam line of the bodice and the peplum. So I've marked my buttons four and a half centimeters apart and I'm just putting it through. Um, now on the right side there of my foot, I have a reference to the sewing line of the band and I'm trying to keep that even a few millimeters off to the left. And um, this is gonna give me a buttonhole that's right in the middle of this band and that's where I want it to be. Then I go off to the next button, you can see my chalk mark and um, I place my buttonhole foot same, a few millimeters to the left of that stitch line. I take my time, I put down the needle by hand to make sure it's going to go exactly where I want it. And when I'm sure it's at the right spot, then I go ahead and start stitching that buttonhole. I do that with all of them. I start from the top and go all the way down, following my chalk marks. And that's it really, it's not that hard. Okay, so here is my first one. Um, I made two. Here you can see, you've already seen this sort of inside out, right? <laughs> there is the neckline uh, that finishes in the V there. It's got the bias binding inside. I chose to put metal buttons and where the seam line meets, meets the bodice to the peplum, I like to have my button right in the middle there. I chose metal buttons for this one. I've got bias binding for the sleeveless armhole that I've made out of the same fabric. And inside you saw that I used bias binding to finish the edges of the button bands. Um, that is something no one's going to see, but look how pretty. You know, pretty just for me. <laughs> the only fitting adjustment I had to do to the straight size 14 was to mess around with the bust studs, but just a little bit. So the side bust start there, I lowered it by half an inch and this waist start that comes up to there, I shortened it by an inch. So that is just to match my apex point and my shape, you know, of my bust. Um, this is the C cup, of course. At the back there, there are the back waist starts and the little peplum and look how this flows. I mean, why wouldn't you want to sew up things in crepe? <laughs> Second one is similar, but it's a dress. So I've chosen the flared skirt above the knee option. There is a midi length option, but I never go with midi. So yeah, above the knee is always my, my thing. So it's exactly the same V-neck. I've got the bias binding in there, in there. I did not do fancy um, <laughs> bias binding in this button band because I just wasn't feeling it. I'm very moody when I sew, by the way. And here we have these little buttons that have like white on the edges. Give it a pop, a pop of white there. Uh, so I love this. I love this tropical print. You don't know how much. Um, and yeah, the, the dress drapes really good, the fabric. And you don't know how flattering these designs are. <laughs> the way I feel when I put this on, I, I put it on and I feel amazing. So I'm just gonna pop these on so you can see how they look on. Um, I'll start with the top first. Okay, so I've got the top on. You see where the V hits really at a modest height. Not low, not high. I like where that hits. The bust that here on the side finishes right where it's supposed to and there too. So none of these darts are hitting at the apex really. And it goes in at the waist. It's a fitted bodice. 
with a little peplum that is not excessive. This is just, just the perfect amount of volume to be flattering and not give you that extra bulk or volume. So the, the arm side finishes there nice and closed and there's nothing gaping, nothing peeking out, no bra showing, nothing like that. So I am extremely happy with this red one. Now I'm getting on the dress. Okay, so here is my super tropical dress. Oh, I just love it so much. This fabric is just amazing. So the fit is the same. You can see the fit around the bust is really good. Um, v neckline there is really nice. Um, yeah, nips in at the waist. So here I am far away. You can see that the skirt is not huge. It just flares out, it skims over your hips and it's so flattering. Yeah, this is just so nice. I really like this dress. <laughs> I'm not gonna like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I can see myself making a lot of these. And it, it's not a really hard make. If you just follow the instructions, it's not hard. And there's loads of tips and, and tricks there to get your customization going. You know, like how to move a bust that around, how to fit your toile. You need to make a toile on the bodice for these dresses. They are fitted and they are woven. Um, so yeah, I re really recommend this dress. <laughs> if you can see, I am absolutely <laughs> enamored by it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is a new dress. It's a new release from Love Notions. It's gonna be on sale for about a week. Um, my affiliate link is down below in the description box. And if you purchase through that link, I get a small commission to support all this that I do here, the channel, you know? <laughs> you need things to be able to produce. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you today. Uh, it's a great pattern. Um, if you add all the sleeve options and the skirt options, you can have so much variety with a great fitting bodice. So that's a plus. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you soon. Bye.